Hey there, lovely people. Welcome back to Higarashi When They Cry. Uh, we are on chapter 11. So in our last episode, we were trying to figure out what happened to Rika and Sadako uh, because they're not at home. And I'm assuming the worst. We, we haven't decided yet, but let's continue and see what happens. This game is not known for having happy endings, so. I saw a ceiling I was familiar with. Though I was groggy from sleep, I did notice that I was in my futon like I was every morning. I looked at my clock, and despite having turned in so late last night, I had woken at precisely the same moment I always did. So low on sleep, but I guess you really can get up at the same time every day. The secrets of the human body never cease to amaze me. Yeah, that's like me. Like, every day I, I'm usually up by like 1.30, 2 o'clock for work, and even, even like on the weekends, if I'm not working at that time, my body just automatically gets up. The human body sucks. If I went back to sleep like this, I would definitely not be waking up again. I spurred myself on and slipped out of my futon. Mom asked me about last night at breakfast. Apparently, we too had gotten a call asking if we knew where Rika-chan and Sadako were, and Mom vaguely understood that something serious was happening. We did not crunch. Really bit into my toast. We didn't have any taste. Just then we heard the chime go ding dong. <gasps> Could it be Rika? Looked up the clock and saw it was about five minutes past my regular meeting time with Reina. So so I'm gonna try and pronounce her name correctly. And and thank you to uh to the, the commenter that told me that I was pronouncing it incorrectly. I believe the way it's pronounced is with a flat E, like Rena. I think we're pronouncing it wrong. I think it's Rena. It was her at the door. Could probably count them on a chicken's toes. That would a weird phrase. You count them on a chicken's toes. How many toes does a chicken have? Three? Four? So like four toes? <laughs> Rena seemed pretty sleep deprived as well. There was something missing from her usual spirit. She said, smiling, albeit stiffly. Rena was probably worrying her heart out about those two as well. Even so, she wanted to go to school. Yeah, that makes sense. You'd want to keep busy. You wouldn't want to just sit at home thinking about it all day. I was just a little bit happy about Rena mustering that much consideration for me. Rena. Rena. I'm gonna get it. We went to the place where we usually meet up with Mion, but she was nowhere to be found. We were a little bit late today, so we thought she'd be waiting for us. Yeah, her crazy ass was probably up all night, howling at the moon. We waited for a bit. Time passed until it got to the point where it was okay for us to go on alone, and we exchanged glances. At that point, my brain, which had finally been woken up by the morning air, recalled the ominous words Oishi-san had left me with last night. The leaders of the three families were disappearing one after the other. And next, it might be the Sonazaki. Oh, I forgot about that. It might be the Sonazaki's leader. Could Mion have? No, that couldn't be. So Oishi told us that the mayor was the head of the Kimiyoshi family. Rika was the head of the Furude family. And Mion, for all intents and purposes, was the head of the Sonazaki clan. So he surmised that maybe this year, each head of the families is missing, since we already have two of them missing. Rena gave me a pat on the back. Two of us headed to school by ourselves. In a way, we saw a bunch of our classmates accompanied by their parents. It even looked like some of them were being taken to school by car. Surprisingly, the principal was also standing watch at the school gate. I'd never seen that before. 
The principal was bowing to our classmates' guardians. The wooden sword leaning next to him was a little ominous. I guess they're worried about someone like snatching kids at school. Makes sense. Rena and I said nothing. The madness that only existed at night had finally crawled out of the sunlight. That's what it felt like. The hushed conversation that had been spreading for a while now all disappeared like an illusion the moment our teacher walked into the door. Silence dominated the classroom. The principal came in with our teacher as well. This was clearly not a normal morning. Principal cleared his throat and approached the date. The days? I'm sorry. It's it's very early for me. The days? Like the podium? Classroom was dead silent. Everyone was staring at Rika-chan and Satoko's empty seats. Principal briefly and simply declared that Rika-chan and Satoko had gone missing. There wasn't a single person in the classroom who didn't already know. There seemed to be many, however, who couldn't accept it as the truth. It had been confirmed to them now by the principal's words. There were sobs throughout the classroom, and I heard a kid crying. They steadily spread throughout the whole room. The big-hearted principal wasn't able to keep his cool either. Right. So that that's like in two years, that's three kids that went missing. So that's Satoshi, Satoko, and Rika. So I guess the schools finally decided like we've only got like twenty kids and three of them have disappeared, so maybe we need to be a little bit a little bit better about watching them. Teacher's voice was a little abrasive. Not even she could conceal the strain she felt from this unprecedented abnormal situation. We should have just canceled school today. However, Marina told me that the school was also like a nursery for the students whose parents both worked, so some of them wouldn't want school to be canceled. <laughs> the feeling of wanting to maintain an everyday atmosphere, if only in school, precisely because our lives have been messed up, was something that I agreed with at this point. Hmm. Hmm. After the teacher, who always had her lunch in the staff lounge, she ate in the classroom today. I had to laugh at her curry bento, which was just rumor until now, but there was nobody to laugh with me. Brenda brought over her chair and lunch over to my seat. Today, it was only the two of us. The fact that we didn't need to drag any other desks over was sad. I was sleepy this morning, but my drowsiness dissipated after coming to school and constantly feeling the incredible tension. Rena's bento box didn't have its usual luster. That was to be expected. Rena was up for a long time last night, too. She wouldn't have had time to make her lunch beforehand. It's not like she would have given up. Oh, she would have gotten up early this morning. That's so nice. I never had anyone at, at school that I shared lunch with. I mean, in American culture, that's probably kind of gross to share your lunch with someone. But this is pretty cute. They're sharing lunch boxes together. Otherwise, the two of us were desperately trying to brighten up the afternoon mood to its usual level as much as we could. I looked around the classroom, and it seemed like we were the only ones trying to do so, surrounded as we were by gloominess. It's like a little lunch date. <laughs> the laughter grew quieter. I was the first one to mess up. I was the first one to mess up. 
Our chopsticks both stopped moving. Couldn't keep it up anymore. Those words might have sounded too miserable. Everyone was thinking it, using roundabout ways to address the topic, but I came right out and said it. I heard Rena catch her breath. Ooh, spill the tea, girl. What you got? That time, since they'd arrived for support, Rena was helping the ladies' society cook the miso soup we'd had. They reported all the information the villagers had gathered, and Rena said she overheard it. Neon had told me yesterday. We had no clues. But nobody saw them on their bikes, right? Isn't that what they said? It's a very small village, and I thought no one said that they saw them on their bikes at all after school. I think someone I think someone took the bikes to make it look like they left on bike. I think someone snatched them from their house and then took the bikes to make it like a cover-up. In town. It makes sense why we couldn't find them even though we searched all of Hino Mazawa then. Still, something didn't fit. I had no basis for thinking that. Just a gut feeling. Same, Keiichi. You and I are on the same page here. It doesn't seem right. I revealed something to Rika-chan that was likely very important to her that day. Then Rika-chan had told me to leave it to her. And then, er... What did she say? Right. If she didn't work hard, then something bad might happen to the dog too, I think. With all the talk of dogs and cats, I still didn't have the faintest idea what she literally meant, but... It might have been Rika-chan's way of saying this was a race against time. Damn it. Selfishly pushed my anxiety on Rika-chan. Tried to run away. When I thought about it, I shouldn't have run back then. I should have asked her more about the dogs and cats. When I think back on it, I really screwed up. Anyway, I don't think Rika-chan was in a situation where she would just go off to play somewhere. Of course, I didn't have any evidence or conviction to base that on. It was just a hunch. <laughs> Oh, see, Rena, Rena knows what's up, too. I agree with you. Look back at Rena, startled. I could hear the conviction in those words. Not replying to my gaze, she took her bento box and went to the hallway. She timed that in a way that broke off the conversation. Suddenly, I got the feeling the next thing she had to say would be hard to say aloud in the classroom. I hurriedly grabbed my bento box and followed her. We'd be in sneaky spies. Rena didn't go to the kitchenette, but rather to the water fountains out back where students seldom went. Water flowed down onto our bento boxes. During that time, Rena didn't say a word. Then after making sure there were no other students around, she finally opened her mouth to speak. なんだか腑に落ちなくて私なりにいろいろ聞いたりしたんだ。プライベートアイ。聞いた。何の？婦人会のおばさんたちにいろいろ。昨日のお味噌汁、お豆腐がいっぱい入ってたでしょ。富田
一丁の半分くらい入ってたと思う残りの半分は冷蔵庫の中にあったの冷ややっこにするつもりだったんだねお皿に開けてラップがかけてあった As Rena explained, she walked around as if she were really going through Rika chan's room. She's like on detective mode. So the tofu that Satoko picked up was like the last ingredient for the miso soup, and that's the one thing that wasn't added. Everything else was in the miso, except for the tofu. Which means that they wouldn't have just left on their bikes, because they were in the middle of cooking. Wasn't everyone saying that their bikes weren't around, so they must have gone somewhere to play by themselves? サンカクコーナーのゴミを見たらすごくブキッチョだった。食事やお弁当はほとんどリカちゃんが作ってるんだけど、たまにね、サトコちゃんがすることもあるの。だからその晩はサトコちゃんがお料理したんだね。それってつ
でね流しの下を開けてみたら醤油の大瓶が瓶ごとなかったの So, so did they maybe leave the house for soy sauce? Is that what she's saying? Soy sauce, 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 I, I assume that maybe Satoko was cooking because Rika wasn't there, but maybe it was just Satoko's turn to cook. Usually watch TV until the food was ready, so she was probably lying down watching a variety show or something. Satoko put the tofu in the miso soup, and right when dinner was about to be ready, she noticed that they were out of soy sauce. So Rika-chan, who had nothing to do, brought the big bottle of soy sauce to a neighbor's house to borrow theirs. Oh, okay, so, so maybe I was right. So maybe Rika left with a bottle of soy sauce to get it filled up and never came back home. And that's why Satoko had to wrap up the food? Because why else would they do that? I always have soy sauce. I'm never without soy sauce or garlic. Those are like the two staples and garlic bread. That's like the three staples in my house. If I don't have those things in my house, you can presume that I'm dead. Rika chan rode her bike out to get some soy sauce. No matter how long Satoko chan waited, though, Rika chan didn't come back. So she had to wrap up the food and she took her bike to go out and look for her. So then Satoko chan called up the house where Rika chan was going. Rika happened to be imposing on you? Something like that. The other person must have replied with something like this. So they like lured them in one at a time. Satoko called Rika a few names in private and wrapped up the dinner she had made for them. <laughs> Satoko called her a few names in private. That bitch. That bitch didn't want to eat my damn food. Put it in the fridge so she could use it for breakfast and lunch the next day. And Satoko got on her bike too and headed for the house where Rika-chan was. So they must have they must have gone to like a neighbor's house and that's where they got snagged. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Veteran housewife would never normally make so much food that she could feed two extra people. Raina flatly denied me. Yeah, that would be that would be kind of a dick move to go out and get soy sauce for dinner that your friend made and then be like, oh by the way, they were having pizza. So screw you, Sadako. Yeah, I get that. This is all only circumstantial evidence and Reina's guesswork. Even so, it was all extremely convincing. It was the only ray of hope we had to topple the situation bereft of clues. Would have had to have been somewhere close, right? That was the heart of it. It would have to be somewhere she'd be comfortable with asking for soy sauce. Somewhere Satoko wouldn't think it's suspicious that she'd be invited for dinner. So who was it? Reina slowly shook her head. Well... I mean, Mion's not at school today either. Could something have happened at her house with all three of them? Right? Well, no, but she helped us to look for them. So she was she was there last night, but she's not here today. Hmm. Right, it's got to be someone that they're both comfortable with. Saw a few girls coming over to rinse out their bento boxes. Reina cut the conversation short there and returned to the classroom. I stayed there alone, my body bathed in the lively voices of the cicadas. I love the cicada background music. I love the sound of cicadas. This is very soothing. I mean, someone's probably like dead, but this is all very soothing to me. Let's think about this. In my own way. Reina had barely any information to go on, and yet she'd reasoned out that much. So there should be something that 
Only I, who knew far more than Reina did, could deduce. Uishi-san said this last night too, but this incident was definitely occurring within Hinimizawa. Rena might not have wanted to believe it, but it's basically a given that the culprit is someone from the village. Right, we worked that out. Trigger for everything was when the four of us trespassed in the Forbidden Storehouse. Somebody saw us going in there. For the culprits, breaking the taboo was a crime punishable by death. That night, Tomotake-san and Takuno-san were sacrificed. There were two left. Shion and myself. However, before the culprits bore their fangs on Shion and me, they went after the mayor, to whom Shion had confessed her sin. Next, they went for Rika-chan, too, to whom I'd confessed my sin. Then what about Sadako? Just a stray bullet? By itself, Rika-chan being sacrificed after I'd told her everything was mortifying, but Sadako, who was sacrificed for no reason, wasn't that all the more regrettable? Yeah, that, that is weird, because if Rika, if Rika was taken because of the, the padlock situation on the shrine, because she had, she'd gotten that cheap padlock for it, and that was what Oishi suspected was the reason that she'd be taken in the first place. If Rika was taken because of her sin with the cheap padlock, then why would they why would they lure Satako out of the house to take care of her too? Like, once you had Rika, wouldn't that be enough? Everything was my fault. Who would be the next to disappear? Would it be Shion and me next time? Why... Why weren't the culprits going for Shion and me right away, though? If they had enough power to erase the mayor and Rikachan, then why not get rid of Shion and me? They went for us. Well, I wouldn't like it, but I could still tolerate it. What I couldn't forgive was them getting rid of those we confessed to. Now that I think of it, yesterday Shion said something alarming. She felt like someone was watching her. But then, was someone watching me as well? Strangely, though, I hadn't felt like that any... I hadn't felt anything like that until now. Even on the root cause of everything, I had never once... Gosh, hold on. I never once had that impression. Maybe that was simply because Shion was more cautious than me and I was just careless. That's another story, though. Let's get back on track. Why weren't the culprits going after Shion and me? I feel like that's where the key to this lay. Could it be... Was I making a big assumption that I shouldn't have been? I thought and thought, but I couldn't come up with an answer. One thing I understood was that I was a concerned party to this case. And then I had a duty to watch over it until everything got resolved. Hmm. I heard the ring of the bell declaring the end of lunch break. Did somebody else disappear tonight? Nobody else did, then I wanted them to get rid of me tonight for sure. And then put an end to all of this. Shion's hysterical voice on the phone last night came back to mind. They planned to murder those close to us first. Make us as miserable as possible. And only then would they kill us. My Barakun. Hmm. I'm going. Principal's urging I return to the classroom, which was quiet as the streets at night. Don't rush me, big boy. There were a lot of parents picking up their children after school. It was just like a kindergarten. Students whose parents didn't come home went home as a group. Left school with everyone else, following the assigned route. But nobody's disappeared during the day. It's always been at night time. I mean, this is a good precaution anyway, since you've had like three students missing in the last two years, but still. Even while leaving, nobody said anything funny. They looked like exhausted mountaineers silently marching through the mountains. As we went, one left, and then another. And in the end, it was just Reina and me. I was supposed to escort Reina all the way to her house, but she declined. It's a fair point. Rena pointed to much more towards my house. Is it Oishi? Oishi said he was going to bother us every day until we talked to him. There's a car stopped in front of it. Yep. Right of that car came Oishi-san. Must have been waiting for my return to ambush me. We should have started walking over, wearing that annoying grin. He's just been bothering me since day one. Rena is a good person. Even when I made a fuss over Rika-chan's disappearance, she never asked me why I did. She could have been suspecting me ever since then, and that would have been okay. Even so, she still hadn't asked me about anything. 
She didn't try and pressure me into revealing the truth. Rena simply listened, smiling like she always did. Even though I insinuated I was related to the incident, she didn't look at me as though she were looking at something dirty. Rena gave me a slight bow and trotted away, leaving me alone with oishi san who walked over. Came all the way to my house? I only think my good fortune that my parents were absent. Since neither of them was around at this hour, they would probably be back late. I still feel like if you're going to talk to a minor, even in like, what does this game take place, 1983? You, you should probably have a parent involved. I don't like this grown-ass man asking us grown-ass questions. <laughs> any strange ideas? Get in the house, take your pants off, Keiichi. We don't want your parents getting any strange ideas. Wishan pushed my back, prompting me to walk. It seemed like he wanted me to get in the car. He wasn't the culprit, but I was the cause of everything. Wouldn't be weird if he wanted to investigate me. Kind of gave me a resigned feeling. Don't be shy. Zip! Open the back door and urge me inside. If I got in, I wouldn't have a very easy time getting out. If I said no, however, then this man might really handcuff me and take me away. I couldn't refuse. I could only accept in good grace. This man is abusing his power. Inside the car had been cooled too much by the air conditioner and... There was a rusty smell coming from the filter. It must have been cleaned only rarely. Turned off the engine and it suddenly became quiet. And the voice of Higurashi with all their cool loneliness stuck inside. I love that sound. That's absolutely how a cicada sounds. It sounded to me like a chorus of voices, lamenting my exorbitant punishment for having harbored such foolish curiosity. For a few moments, while listening to those voices, I myself lamented. The days that had been twisted and distorted since that night. Oishi-san, as if waiting for me to voluntarily begin talking, lit a cigarette and listened to the Higarashi. The silence became deafening, and I was the one who folded first. Don't laugh. My friends are missing, asshole. Okay, so first incident, we're talking about Tomotake and Takano? Freak deaths of Tomotake-san and Takano-san on the night of the Watanagashi. Tomitake-san。まずは so he was assaulted and then he clawed out his own throat with his fingernails. The same thing happened in the um, Onika Kushi chapter. Chapter 1. Yeah. Right. Same thing happened. He clawed out his throat. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. The police didn't know anything other than the fact that the victims died inexplicably. Tomitake-san 
なかなかどうして鋭いですねもちろん私もそこは注目すべき点だと思っていますよ他にもいくつか不審点はありますがまあ現時点でお話しできるのはこのくらいです村長さんの方はどうですか何か手がかりはありましたか Okay, so this is investigation number two. The missing mayor, Mayor Kimiyoshi. I'm exhausted that topic, I changed the subject. Otherwise, you might turn the conversation on me. I found a story of the last day of the day. I found a story of the last day of the day. Let's talk a b The mayor, Kichiro Kimiyoshi. Apparently, he was suffering from severe, severe hemorrhoids. That's something that you want to share with your family. 古い生まれの方って非常にプライドが高いんですよね。それで村長さん、誰にも内緒で獅子骨市内にある大学病院の肛門科に通われていたんです。Got it. Okay. 失踪当日、村長さんは診察の予約が取ってあったんで、朝一で出かけられました。So he's getting himself checked out, stop some preparation H on that shit, okay? Even I knew that big hospitals like university hospitals had a really long waiting time. Apparently, people would get in line hours beforehand, even if they had an appointment. The appointment was at 1 o'clock in the morning. Nothing suspicious at all about that. The appointment was at 1 o c 余裕を持ってお帰りになるはずだったんですが、途中、電車で人身事故がありましてね、どうもそれで足止めを食ってしまったらしく、家に着いたのは会合の時間の直前でした。ご家族が大慌てで神社の集会場に出かけていく村長さんを目撃しています。会合ってのは何だったんですか確か、その会合の帰り道に失踪してるんですよね。うん会合は御三家と町会の主要役員が集まってのものでした。今年も起こってしまった連続開始事件の対応について協議したものと思われます。So then on his way home, the old man who had treated Shion like his own daughter, he was a dependable person who would encourage Shion whenever she felt pressured by anxiety, and yet Shion's painful voice struck me right in the heart. どうなさいました I'm thinking about how strange my own. Wait. How strange my own voice sounded. What was it that just surprised me? Wait, hold on. Can we look at the log? Alright, hold on. Do we miss something? Wait, I just, I just want to see if I can figure it out before he does. Members of the town at their meeting. Wait, didn't. Okay, so. They were they were at the meeting and they were discussing the freak death incident. But Xion said that she had talked to him that day, right? Is that what Keiichi's surprised about? I squeezed my head with my hands to try and drag back out what I had only realized for a split second. Remember, Keiichi, my Vara. I just realized something. Something important. End of Watanagashi. That was when everything started. Right. The night Takano san and Tamatake san died. I'm trying to piece this together myself. See, I like this part. This is like one of my favorite parts, is when you have to like try and figure stuff out, and I want to see if I can get it before Keiichi does. Next morning, word of the incident had spread throughout Team Mizawa. They planned to talk about it during the evening meeting. The mayor, however, had an appointment at the hospital, and as planned, he went there without telling his family. Right. So he went to Shishibone. To the proctologist, and he was finished by 1 p.m., and then he had lunch, and then he went back home by train. Piecing stuff together. You gotta check up at the hospital. Ate something. You gotta, uh, and then there was an unexpected delay on his train ride back. When he returned, the meeting was already about to start. Mayor changed clothes, got on his bicycle, and hurried to the assembly hall at the shrine as fast as he could. When he heard about the incident on the night of Watanagashi, until when he showed up at the assembly hall, everything he was doing that day was done in secret. 
At that time, nobody found out that. He went to the hospital alone. He ate alone. And he got on the train alone. So when did Shion talk to him? Is that what he's saying? I mean, he had absolutely no contact with anyone else. <gasps> Could have even called him on the phone. That's right. He didn't tell anyone about his hemorrhoids. Which is a weird thing that I didn't think I'd be saying out loud. So what does that mean, Kaichi Maibara? Why does that matter, Kaichi Maibara? Uh, because Shion told us that she had talked to him that day on the phone. Didn't she? So, we went into the ritual storehouse, the night of the Tanagashi, found out that Tomotake and Takano had died, and then the next day, the mayor was, like, busy all day. He didn't have time to talk to anyone. I told him everything. I told him in Kimiyoshi everything. That night, I told the mayor that we snuck. When? When did you do this? So when did she talk to him? Sweat burst out of my body like bullets. I came one long strand and slid down. Down from my forehead to my nose and fell. So then... What does it mean? Hey, Kaichi, my bara, no more playing dumb. When did she tell him? When did she tell him? Shion. Shion said she learned of the incident from a phone call her father had made that morning. Mare had left the house first thing in the morning for his appointment at the hospital. So she didn't talk to him in the morning. He didn't tell anybody where he was going. Nobody knew about him going to the university hospital. Furthermore, his train ride back to the house was delayed by an accident. As soon as he got home, he rushed out to the assembly hall. So he ate alone, he went to the hospital alone, he took the train alone and was delayed, and then went right to the meeting. The meeting at the assembly hall began and continued until it was dark out. Then everyone left. Nobody saw him after the meeting was over, and that was when he disappeared. He just disappeared. Which meant... Which meant... Which meant... Um... That Shion lied to us? Does Shion... Does she have some part in all this, too? Another part of me was messing with my thoughts, demanding that I didn't think any further than that. My head was pounding violently, and the fluids packed inside it. All blended together until nothing made sense. It was just about to settle, yet it had been smashed and melted in the blink of an eye. No longer able to retain its shape. Why would she lie? Unless she had something to do with his disappearance. We should sound lit yet another cigarette. There was yet another cigarette butt placed in the ashtray. Was it displaying the passage of time? Had I... Had my thoughts been frozen over for that long? We gotta tell him about Shion. Because now, now this isn't adding up. That's like a pretty accurate timeline of events. My mind had become a gigantic oozing mess. My brain felt like it had been totally minced by the blades of a blender, and I couldn't think. I don't like Oishi, but... Like, she lied. Wishi-san gave his best attempt at an adult smile. Right, we knew that. Everybody knows. Right, we knew that. Really? As soon as I said it, I regretted confirming my presence there, but it didn't matter anymore. Right, 
扉の鍵を付け替えた村長や理科さんまで犠牲にそれだけの事態を引き起こす何があの中にあったのか。Why would we not tell him? We're already here. He figured out like 95% of what's happened. It's far too tired of keeping quiet about this. Perhaps that was Uishi san's goal all along, but again, that didn't matter anymore. Yeah, just tell him. Terrible, I don't think so. Tatoiba Kaksezai no Yamatoka Keshino Himitsko Junga Tatoka Ariwa Sorenka Chungoatari no Kenjunga Yama Hodo Tsumarete Tato. What does he think is going on in this town? Oh, Shinna Kibako ya Kontenanga Yamazumi Sarete Masun de Shaka. He thinks the Sonozakis are running some kind of like a legal front in there, and that's why it's always locked. Because he said the Sonozakis were the ones that always set up the festival, and that they're like a criminal organization, essentially, like a mob. So he's thinking that they're using it to store weapons or drugs or something in that storehouse. There's nothing as exaggerated as what Uishi san was hoping for, but I feel like in a way there were plenty of terrible things hidden in there. From the perspective of someone who viewed the storehouse as sacred, whether or not he'd seen some crazy things didn't matter in the slightest. Four of us broke the tab. Ooh, punish us. It should have been what happened. あの最後でに何か秘密があるんじゃないかと思って捜査令状を請求したんですがねもうクルーゼンゼツ後の妨害工作がありまして信仰の対象に対する侮辱でありケンポで定めた信仰の自由をなんたらかんたらいやもうだ
fluids in my body all reversed direction. I lost my sense of balance, and everything I could see started to warp and twist out of shape. I suddenly couldn't endure it. Hang on. Hang on. Shion had already disappeared. Then... Then... That night, that... That call, that... Wait. That phone call, who was that? She called me every night since since this festival happened. She encouraged me. We vowed that we would do our best to live on and not be erased. Yes, that should have been a phone call with Xion. Should have been a phone call with Xion. Should have been a... Were we not talking to Xion? Were, were we talking to maybe Mion instead? Because we already know that they switch places. Oh, shit. But the stabbing pain like needles were being pushed into every pore of my body. I turned on my back and began spreading throughout the rest of me. We gotta tell him. When it had completely covered the surface of my skin, it began to worm its way inside my stomach as well. Right. So she vanished. That was like four or five episodes ago. That's forever. That day, Uishi san had only caught me, and she unbounded away, lying that she needed to go to work. Didn't she, she called us that night? She did. And I remember that, that we busted her chops and we're like, I can't believe that you just left us with Oishi. <laughs> oh, man. So then we must have been talking to Mion. She's been gone forever. Or after Xion ran away without me? Well, let's talk now, Oishi. I got all this information. Let's just tell him. Let's just tell him. Couldn't be. It just couldn't be. It was Shion on the phone. Shion on the phone. It was from Shion, from Shion. Shion san wa tokku ni shissou shite rin desu. Tsugi wa anata nan desu yo. And who was on the phone those past nights? It has to be Mion. She's the one that's acting crazy. Who was on the phone those past nights? Who was on the phone those past nights? So na... Baka na! That's a little bit extra, Keiichi. So that means like, because we haven't we haven't seen Xion, I don't think since the library. I didn't even think about it. She's been calling us every night, but we haven't seen her. Does that mean that Mion's been calling us, impersonating Xion, to try and like get our guard down and get more information about about what happened that night? I got on the couch and stayed there days for a while. My mind was completely blank. I couldn't think anything more than for a few seconds. There was a note in my house saying that mom and dad would be home late, and I should have some ramen or something for dinner. I could make it whenever I got hungry, but I had no appetite. I just stared blankly at the ceiling without eating anything. Hands at the clock were already pointing at ten. Would I get another phone call like that today? Even though Shion had already disappeared. Would she still call me? Where were they calling from, and who were they? And the other thing is shady is that if shion has been gone since the day after the festival... Mion hasn't said anything about her missing sister, who lives outside of Hinimizawa. Nobody's mentioned that Shion's missing, not even her own sister. The more I thought about it, the more I started to tremble. 
I even thought about just disconnecting the phone line. I'm thinking a little less logically, I really would have done it too. Hold on, Keiichi, my bara. Uishi's on admitted himself, didn't he? That Shion went missing a lot? Couldn't she have just gone to relatives that Uishi san didn't know about and have been there ever since? Shion and I were both being targeted by somebody, so it wouldn't be strange to think that she went somewhere she usually didn't in order to hide. It must have been why Uishi san couldn't locate her, why he labeled her disappearance. Yeah, that had to be it. She didn't have disappeared at all. My right hand moved of its own volition and slapped me on the cheek. Cold sting let me calm down a little. Yeah. I knew I didn't want to admit she had disappeared. Admitting it would mean that something terrifying was definitely happening. I just need to figure out whether Shion was the one on the phone or not. Would I ask her if she was actually Shion? It seemed like an incredibly absurd thing to do. The person on the other end still believed that I thought she was Shion. That gave me a tiny advantage. Who else could it be but Mion? Who else could it be? Casually, completely casually, I would listen to what she had to say. And fend her off. It would tear the skin off the monster. It would definitely be really scary for me. However, as the last survivor of the people who went into the storehouse that night, this was my duty to perform. Still, then, who would call me and pretend to be Shion? I only heard over the phone, but her voice shouldn't be that easy to replicate. It was definitely... That was definitely Shion's voice? Sounded just like her? Could have only been Shion? Or her twin sister? It was someone, though, wasn't there? The one who sounded just like Shion. Mion. Mion. Who else could have done this? At this point, seriously, after all this time. The little things that didn't quite make sense about Mion until now overwhelmed my mind. She just had a freak out in our last episode. She, like, had a little mini panic attack and was saying crazy bat shit stuff. And she's been acting a little bit weird over the last couple episodes. They've been questioned about sneaking into the ritual storehouse, and now she shook the ladder while spouting about curses. Who else? Who else could have? Why, though? Why would Mion? I thought back to the things about the Sonazaki family that I had heard from oishi san and Shion. Mion was always entangled in the incidents, in a position where she was omnipotent. Some of that information included things that... Shion had told me after she disappeared. I madly scratched at my head. Courage, give me the courage. Just a little bit of courage to pick up the phone. I know it will ring tonight. It would be so easy to run away. That, though, would be the same as making it easy for them to erase me. I cannot run. I must stand up and face it. After all, the next sacrifice would definitely be me. I was sure Shion would use tricky words to try and trap me. Be careful, be careful. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. There she is. At that point, it rang. The phone rang and I didn't know where the call was coming from. Shion had disappeared. Disappeared a long time ago. Disappeared the night after Watanagashi. Yet, until today, she had been calling me like nothing happened. Now again, tonight... People that had disappeared, their corpses simply haven't been found. I really didn't think they were alive. So if it really was Shion on the other end, then did that mean she was calling me from another world? Of course that couldn't be. A living being was calling me, pretending to be Shion. Shion was long gone, and yet as though she were alive and well. The phone continued its incessant ringing. I, I didn't want to pick it up if I didn't have to. I just concluded, though, that not doing so wouldn't solve anything. We gotta pick up the phone, pretend everything's cool, and maybe, like, poke and prod a little bit to see if it's really Xion. But what'd I do if I answered it? Would I immediately declare that she wasn't Xion and ask who she was? Alternatively, would I pretend I was still fooled and try to grab her by the tail? Yeah. Let's, let's just pretend everything's cool. What I was most afraid of was what the person on the phone would do when she realized that I knew she wasn't Xion. However, as long as I continued to let her think I was fooled, she wouldn't do anything extreme, right? I just make sure to be careful. That should be the safest option. I've made up my mind. I'll answer the phone. Once I do that, I'll talk to her as if nothing happened. It wasn't all I'd do this time, though. I'd scope her out. Who was she? What was she thinking? What was she after? Why was she doing this? Was she really the one who killed Tomotake-san and Takano-san? What happened to the mayor? What happened to Rika-chan and Satoko? Reached out the receiver, my arm trembling. There were too many things I wanted to know. Too many things I wanted to ask. I was scared. I should start by picking up the phone. 
Pick it up, Keiichi. Pick it up, Keiichi. How relieved I would have been if I hadn't been a call from Shion. Is it, though? The momentary, convenient, and above all fleeting prediction was ripped into a thousand pieces. Couldn't help shaking at this point. Get ready for this. No, they're home. They're they're at home screwing. They're in bed making sweet love. I failed. Later on a fatal piece of information that I was currently the only one at my house. Yeah, then they're then they're having having mind blowing sex she on. Moving on. If if Uishi san hadn't let me know, I might have allowed myself to shed a tear or two at Shion's considerate words. Instead, now that I come to this, I couldn't take her words at face value. The person on the other end of the receiver, the more perfect as Shion they were, the more my blood curdled in fear. Just how cruel and grave a meaning did those words hold. Their weight astonished me, and then a moment later I was overcome with numbness and felt like I would pass out. I had asked if Rika-chan and Sadako had been kidnapped. Shion in turn had answered that there wasn't much doubt. It had cruel meaning behind her words. Rika-chan and Sadako what happened to Rika-chan and Satoko after they were kidnapped? That's what I wanted to ask, but I frantically caught myself. I know she had given that question a terrifying response, in such a way that it sounded like it had nothing to do with her. I was scared of that, so I immediately brought up the mayor. That said, however, in which I talked about the mayor... Oh, I mean, that's true, but he was also like 106. He was a very old man, right? Well, tried to defend so much, I almost lost my balance. The scenery in my eyes whirled around and around like the hands of a clock and tried to swallow me whole from below. I ended up put a hand on the wall to support myself. A moment later, a severe nausea welled up within me. How was she saying such things so lightly? Mare was killed, and did that mean the same had happened to Rikachan and Satoko? I like this music. I feel like I'm playing an old school RPG. No, no, that, that couldn't be. You weren't some random old man. It was Rika-chan. It was Satoko. They, they couldn't... They couldn't kill them so readily. What do you mean it's better to think that they ended up that way? How is that better? They were the words I wanted to hear the least, and I fought them back with a scream of my own. Even though it wouldn't change anything. Still. Still, I couldn't help but scream. This time the tears flowed. I've been confronted with the most horrific outcome that I'd been trying to consider avoiding since last night, and I cried. There's no longer any doubt that it was my fault. I killed them. I killed Rika-chan and Satoko. I succumbed to the weakness of my own heart and convinced everything to Rika-chan. That's why they were killed. I meant I killed them. Rika-chan looked at me with those innocent eyes. If only I hadn't given in. I... I... Ah. Uh, my own voice gave out, and yet I still cried. And cried. 
Try to pick Shion. Mikachan and Satoko, they've been killed. Couldn't even find the remains. I'd never be allowed to even apologize to their faces. If that was to be my punishment, then how brutal a punishment it was. I think Shion tried to comfort me, but I didn't hear any of it. Shion was shouting, imploring me with a voice that sounded like tears were in her eyes. However, I was coming to hate the sound of that voice even more and more. The Shion killed them. I had no doubts that this person killed them. Why? Why? I like crushing the receiver in my hand. How long did this person plan on acting like it was someone else's problem? There was magma in the pit of my stomach, and it felt like I was going to erupt at any moment. <laughs> Is this supposed to be our trick question? I was incoherent at this point. My emotions had broken through the dam inside of me, rushing forth, and I couldn't stop them. These were not simple questions, this was an interrogation. Shion herself hadn't realized it yet. It was just too funny. It was so funny that I couldn't stop crying. That's why I'm asking you! Haha! <laughs> Both our ragged breaths could be overheard on could be heard over the phone. Right, but then we have more people that are disappearing. Silence fell between us. Shion didn't answer for a while. Sob. Was Shion crying? <laughs> the same for me. As I listened to Shion's bitter weeping, I could feel my agitation subsiding. There's nothing fake about her words. She even understood how I felt. When? When did you confess? いけないことだとは分かっていましたが、本当に面白半分泣きました。ちょっとした探検気分のつもりだったんです。一緒に入った高野さんたちは、その後すぐに殺されてしまいました。それも、あんなむごい最後、あの日から、いつ私
も襲われるのではないかと君よしのおじいちゃんしか助けてくれる人がいませんだからおじいちゃん助けてって君よしのおじいちゃん怒らなかったそしてにっこり笑ってジオンちゃんがちゃんと反省してるなら鬼隠しになんかなるものかって本当に笑いながら任せなさいって<laughs> I don't buy it Shion cried bitterly recalling the beloved mare's death such a sad voice that none who heard it could prevent it from twisting their hearts again I did let my emotions take over and go off at her Shion was in the same situation as me she'd been my one and only comrade except she's not Shion thump my heart pounded my other self deep within my mind whispered to me don't forget Keiji Maibara don't forget about the mayor on the morning after Botanagashi he was told of Takano-san and Tomotake-san's over the death and committed to a meeting that evening he went to a hospital appointment he didn't tell his family he only made it back just in time for the meeting he went straight to the assembly hall that's what Oishi-san said so ask her straight up when did you talk to him when did you let the mayor know when did it happen was it over breakfast? Did the two of you share a croissant? When did it happen? ごめんな。シオン、悲しい気持ちのところにお湯打ちをかけるようで、シオンは打ち明けたんだよな。君よしのおじいちゃん。つまり、いつ打ち明けたんだよ。<笑><笑> Began to get scared of saying it aloud after hearing her sad voice. I wasn't saying it was contradictory, though. Besides, if there was a contradiction, then I wanted Shion to explain it to me. There's no contradiction, honey. There's a momentary silence. After stammering a few times, she replied, So she didn't see him at the hospital. Shion didn't know what hospital the mayor went to. That meant it was impossible for her to have gone all the way to the hospital to confess everything. Since she didn't know his destination, then she obviously couldn't have seen him on the train, either. If there was any other chance for her to contact him, it would have been after he came to Hinomizawa. The train, however, had been delayed, and he only got back right before the meeting was about to start. Then he had the meeting, and then on the way home, he disappeared. Didn't have time. There wouldn't have been enough time for him to listen to Shion spill the beans. Give me a time. When did you tell him? But I think your answer has to be pretty precise. <laughs> Sob pierced into my ears. Just thought we were trying to piece together his disappearance. I was taken by the illusion that I was bullying her. Even so, I'll say it. If I'm wrong, then please correct me. Please prove to me that you're the real Shion. That's, that's what we were told. Sonchoは朝一で誰にも内緒の大学病院へ一人で診察に出かけた。シオンは今この病院を知らないと言った。だから帰ってくるまで、うん。Sonchoと接触することはできないはずだ。そうだろう。帰りの電車が事故で遅
question was so simple to answer, but she didn't give me an immediate response. あの日、シオンが行くと言った倍とすら君は欠勤してるんだ。もっと端的に言おう。君は俺と一緒に行った図書館へ行こう。誰にも目撃されていない。ケイちゃん、あの。She's full of shit. The other end fell silent as the grave. So quiet that it was like the phone cord had been cut. Couldn't sense anyone there. Mm -hmm. Get her. Get her, Keiichi. Get her. I'm so happy. Get her. Tear into her. She and Sobs were torturing me. Still, I'm pretty sure I haven't said anything wrong. We're just stating the facts. If you're going to defend yourself, honey, now's the time to do so. Right. You lied about the mayor. You lied about going to your part-time job. You haven't been seen since the day after the festival, and you've been calling me every night and didn't just let it slip that you were staying somewhere else? No. If she never did have the chance to meet with the mayor on that day, then that meant... When he disappeared. What the hell is that supposed to be? Beep. Beep. Went the dial tone. So there are days for a while until I advised you to hung up on me. So that didn't go over super smooth. Um, well, shit. Okay. So, I guess we've been talking to Mion? I mean, she's the one that's been unhinged. Tough call. We got an achievement. Okay, a few new tips. Problem with twins. Not limited just to Nimizawa, but in Onigakuchi Village, especially, the three families detested giving birth to twins as successors. Long-term dictatorship built on the precarious balance of the three families must have feared collapsing under the weight of internal strife from things like family quarrels. According to literature, if twins were born, then they had to be they had to be culled. Not the very fact that both the Sonazaki family's successor, Mion Sonazaki, and her twin Shion are alive and it is of itself deeply interesting. Perhaps the current leader, Oryu, is sympathetic? So they would have just killed both twins? Instead of just killing the one? Of course, twins were not cared for equally, and as the heir, Mion received special treatment. What I've heard, despite the two of them looking exactly the same on the outside, Talent lies solely with Mion. My own observations of the two of them don't leave me with that impression. Tradition dictates that the leader of the Sonazaki family is said to inherit a demon, and tattoo a magnificent one on his or her back. In accordance with the tradition, there is an extremely high possibility that Mion has her tattoo on her back. We've never seen her back. So maybe. When I've heard, there is apparently a magnificent demon tattooed on Oreo's back as well. Then I wonder what sort of tattoo belongs to the heir, Mion. I really want to see her back. Hmm. I really want to know why she's like batshit nuts. That's what I want to know. That'd be my my question. At the Suzu Mahjong Parlor. Reserved for the day. Suzu Mahjong Parlor. Clatter clack. Luigi <laughs> handed over a convenience store bag with a carton of cigarettes in, in it to the old lady who owned the mahjong parlor, and she shrewdly made herself scarce. She was used to this by now. Everyone 
Everyone sitting at the mahjong tables in the small parlor were Oishi's subordinates, but there were no tiles laid out anywhere. Energetic responses filled the parlor. Already it had lost the atmosphere of a place of entertainment. So Oishi was trying to get a search warrant for um, the Furude Shrine because he thinks that it has something to do with the disappearances of the people in Himezawa and the murders of Tomotake and Takano. But um, the Sonazakis have a couple people in power that I guess are blocking it. A damn upstart chief. Veterans in the room cursed him. いや、ウィシペスオフザロングピーポー。いや、そういうのも悪くないですね。ヘルフュードライラフス。ワンエニティングトラフアバウト、バットだ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ、だ